could not be happier with my new old South Bend 9-inch lathe. I got it completely restored and cleaned up, fully operational. I got it accessorized with some stuff that makes it a little bit easier to use, and I even got the whole workstation complete with some backsplash and shelving. There's really only one issue. It's missing a part. The machine originally featured a dial that indicated the position of the lead screw. This isn't essential, but it really helps in the threading operations on the lathe. It isn't a complex mechanism, however, to find an original replacement gets, well, pretty spendy. I might have been able to budget it, but earlier this year I had bought myself a 3D printer. This came from a kit I got from eBay. You build the frame yourself and it has all the electronics. It really has everything you need to get started and going right away. It's not the fanciest one in the world, but it actually works pretty decently, from what I can tell. Serendipitously, I was able to find the 3D printing files for this part that I'm missing on Thingiverse. There's four parts to this print. There's the two halves of the body, there's the face of the dial itself, and then there's the gear that rides along the lead screw. I printed this out using ABS filament and 100% infill. That means there's no gaps on the inside of the model to just kind of take up space. It's all solid filament. Apart from that, all my other settings, well, I'm still kind of figuring out, but the print came out. It does take a few tries, but I got all the parts made. Now the two halves of the body didn't perfectly line up, and I'm sure there's many reasons for that, but it's of no consequence because we're going to paint it anyway. So we'll just go ahead and fill those gaps in with a little bit of my favorite fix-it, Bondo Putty. After a good slathering, we can let the putty cure out and then sand it all completely smooth. Now, I filled the whole part up with the putty so that I could smooth out those 3D printing lines. One of the few advantages of having a gloss white lathe is the fact that I can match it to any other gloss white paint, such as this Krylon spray paint that's made for spraying onto plastics. All of the 3D printed holes needed a little bit of cleanup with a drill so that I could put a 5 16 inch metal rod in to connect everything together. There's also some holes on the side of the gear and the dial face for set screws. I'm tapping these 10 by 24 so that I can tighten them onto the shaft that connects the two. It took me a couple of tries, but I found a marker that I could fill in the little etchings on the face of the dial with some black. This marker filled in the grooves nicely and then I could wipe away any excess, leaving everything nice and exposed and easy to read. Now after taking some measurements to find my proper length, I'm just cutting up some rod I got from the hardware store. This is just hobby steel rod, it's 5 16 in diameter. After making the cut on the bandsaw, it's really important to get a nice, true, and square face. So I'm going to really take my time with a file and just get this nice and perfect. I'm just kidding. Whee! With all the parts prepped, gathered, and nulled out, we can start the assembly process. The white paint's even starting to show dirt, just like on the rest of the lathe. The dial is attached to the carriage of the lathe with just a little 3 eighths of an inch stud. Instead of set screwing it in, I'm going to epoxy it for extra strength. A set screw in the carriage itself actually clamps that stud and holds the whole assembly in place. This design allows you to rotate the dial so you can disengage it instead of removing it completely. Now turning the lathe on, you can see how the dial works. When the spindle starts turning, it starts forming the lead screw. This lead screw turns the gear, which then turns the face of the dial. This tells you what position the lead screw's in so that when cutting a thread, you can hit that thread on the exact same spot while disengaging and re-engaging the cutter. Seems to work so far, so let's put it to the test and cut a thread. The gearbox is set to 20 teeth per inch. The gear train is engaged, moving forward. The back gears are engaged. The compound rest is set at 29 and a half degrees, and a threading tool is inserted. Threading mission is go flight. The lever I flipped obviously engages the whole carriage with the lead screw, and now the whole carriage is moving the cutter 
at the rate that the lead screw is turning. That's why our threading dial is no longer rotating, but the second that I disengage it, it will start rotating again. Slowly. I can now back out the cutter, move it back in front of the workpiece, and as you see here, re-engage. This process is repeated a number of times, moving the cutter inwards a little tiny bit each time until the threads come to their proper final size. Checking it with a thread pitch gauge shows that, well, those threads were cut were pretty satisfactory. These are the first threads I've cut on this lathe. You know, a lot of people really don't like cutting threads on the lathe, but it's actually one of my favorite operations. And this lathe makes it even easier than on the mini lathe. The 3D printed thread chasing dial seems to work out perfectly. It's not a load bearing part, so I don't really worry about it wearing out. The Thingiverse link to 3D print one of these out yourself is in the description, so check that out if you're interested. At this point, I really feel like the lathe is ready for action and ready for projects. If this is your first time here, feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos. I do a lot of home workshop type of stuff. If you'd like to support me, I have a Patreon account, and I try to add value to that by providing behind the scenes and updates and vlogs and things of that nature. Anyway, thanks for watching.